country. You know, I'll let you guys start off and lead me where you'd like me to go. We have so many things going on with this great event. Uh, very, very talented top 10 football team coming into Neyland Stadium with South Carolina. So a lot of things going on. So I'll answer any questions you may have. Coach, uh, how much do you, did you kind of talk to Dave Hart and sort of urge him to get this done after you came to the race in March? Well, we've been in discussions and, you know, hats off to both administrations in Tennessee with Dave Hart. And, you know, that's the vision that we talk about with our athletic program and our football program, you know, constantly that vision to constantly move forward and now to make this a reality and be a part of college football history is just another illustration, another example of what's going on in Tennessee. We should try to look your, that far um, forward, but just your thoughts, I guess, thinking about what might take place on a day like that. that take well, I think to be a part of, you know, not just college football history, but football history. And, you know, what, what a great uh, experience for our fan base, for our universities, but also for our student athletes. You know, this is why you come to institutions and this is why you come to Tennessee to be a part of something as big as this. So obviously it's a few years down the road, but looking forward to it, as you can see, yeah, it's pretty special. What does this do for your program now as far as the attention you're gaining from something like this? Well, I think it adds to the momentum. You know, I think already people see around the country we have a lot of work to do, but they can see the progress that we're making. And uh, so in all areas with our current players recruiting, uh, anything and everything, I th again, it's an illustration of where we're going at Tennessee. Where, did Dave come to you at some point recently, or how long have you kind of known about this thing bubbling up? Yeah, he's, he came to me, and it's been in the works, and, you know, there's so many logistics, you know, that go through to making this a reality, but, you know, they made it a reality, and I'm I'm uh, looking forward to being a part of it. What's your reaction, Coach, when you heard you think, yeah, that's not realistic? I mean, is that playing a game in a racetrack, or is it just kind of, you know, whatever, let me know if it's... If really serious about it or well what? you know what you know the individuals at Bristol were very serious about it and they had a great plan you know they came to Knoxville we met with them and uh, we liked what they had and then you know we had some areas you know that, that needed to be addressed and, and they were able to be addressed and you know there's a lot of effort a lot of thought that's gone into this and uh, so you know we made it a reality when did you meet with them uh, gosh, I've lost track of time. It was a few months ago. How much is this a selling point for, for the kids and guys you're looking at down the road? Well, in any time you can be a part of football history, I think there's a big selling point. Again, we have to, again, focus on the process. But, again, I think it's just another illustration, like I said, of where this football program is going, this entire athletic department, the vision at the University of Tennessee. And uh, it's, it's a chance and an opportunity to be a part of something extremely special that will live with you for a lifetime. Were you on board right away, or did it take some convincing? No, I was on board, you know, but I, again, there were some logistical things that need to be addressed and to make sure that, you know, everything is in the benefit for our fans and for our student athletes and moving forward. But uh, I think it's a great thing, you know, for our institutions. It's a great thing for our football program, but I think it's a great thing and a monumental thing for college football as well. What were some of those issues that you needed to have addressed? Well, just, you know, so many things that go to putting on a, you know, a football game, the field, the field conditions, you know, logistical questions in terms of housing for your football teams, making sure the accommodations, you know, appropriate for your fans, just everything that goes involved in putting on a football game. And, you know, the individuals at Bristol Motor Speedway have been outstanding. With these two fan bases and with the location of Speedway right between the two schools, what kind of crowd do you think expect to have here in a few years? Well, we expect to break the world's record. So, uh, you know, it's going to be the biggest ever and two great passionate fan bases and looking forward to it. What's the judge when you were thing, here? This thing has been kind of talked about for kind of a long time. Did you know that when it was first kind of brought up again? Yeah, you know, I had done my research with the history, but I don't think it's ever gotten to a point where it would, the magnitude of it and the seriousness of it, and it became a reality of moving forward, and there's been a lot of long hours, you know, a lot of work behind the scenes, and those individuals behind the scenes deserve a lot of credit to making this a reality. Was Coach, when you were here in March, was there something Marshall? about the... It was, you know, you, you heard it, you know, coming here in March about what it would be great to have a... Tennessee Virginia Tech matchup and everybody spoke about it and that's kind of what got my mind wandering a little bit but you know there wasn't any negotiations it was just kind of conversation at that time. Yeah, the, when you were here in March did that sort of I mean give you an idea or feel for what it might be like if you played a football game? Absolutely you know it's one of the greatest sporting events I've ever you know been to and been a part of and the passionate fan base that was here the excitement the energy it was electric.
Coach, with y'all scheduled already to play Nebraska, I think, in that season, was that any, any concern at all? Even Because if, if the SEC goes to a nine-game sure. schedule, that's a pretty hard schedule. Well, the scheduling is always, you know, important component, and the Nebraska game has been pushed back, you know, because of just the uncertainty with scheduling as we continue to move forward. So Have what, you heard from some of the young guys on this team that, I mean, there were rumors last week that this was going to happen, but that they'll actually be playing here. Have sure. you heard anything? You know, I really haven't spoken to our football team about it because it, you know, wasn't official till today. And, you know, I want all of our focus on the great challenge that we have this Saturday with South Carolina. Nebraska game was a specific date that's been pushed back to. I'm not sure. I know there's a specific date, but my focus is on this week. How specific were they about the logistics of, you know, the game day stuff, the locker rooms and all that kind of stuff? Very specific, you know, and that's the thing is, is every detail was covered. You know, and we talk about the small details and the attention to detail and, you know, we to all three parties with Bristol and Virginia Tech and Tennessee, so we've gone through all that. What's the reaction of the commitments to this opportunity to possibly play in the biggest game ever? Well, I haven't been able to, to speak with them yet because it hasn't been official, but we will very shortly. You're talking about the 2016 Nebraska game. Do you mean pushback in that season or pushback to a later year? A later year. Anything else, guys? Coach, I know you're very young, so a million times, so I'm just kidding. Just the atmosphere and what you expect from this. I mean, it's three years from now, but people are already excited about what's going to happen. Well, I think it has three years to build up, you know, in the building up process and to be a part of college football history. Football history is going to be very, very special to us. And, you know, I'm excited for our student athletes to be a part of something like this that will live with them forever. And for Tennessee to be at the forefront of breaking the attendance record, I think is exciting as well. And to be able to participate in it, whether you're a fan, whether it's the band, whether it's the coaching staff, our administrations or our players, you know, it's a part of it's a part of being being a chance to be a part of history. This could have a significant impact on recruiting, don't you think? I would think so. You know, everything is about, you know, making an impact. And I think, you know, more so than just this game, it's an illustration of how we're continuing to grow and elevate our football program, the vision that we have, uh, the relentless approach that we're taking on the field, off the field. So I just think it's another illustration of what's going on at Tennessee. There are neutral site games already played in Atlanta and Dallas and maybe some other venues. Would you like to do that? Would you like to play neutral site games other than just Bristol? I do. I think it's healthy. I think it's healthy for the development of your football team, learning how to go on the road, you know, how, what it takes to play winning football on the road, you know, exposing it to kind of like a, a bowl game atmosphere, mm -hmm. you know, so I think there's a lot of positives that go into that. Also, I think the excitement, I think it's, it's healthy for college football as well. Do you think some of those venues could also help you in recruiting? Well, I do. You know, everything is about, you know, appealing to the prospective student athlete. And again, you know, to have marquee games and marquee venues, I think are critical as we continue to elevate our football program. Would you, how long do these negotiations go, no, negotiations go back? Because I've heard maybe as long as February. Is that Yeah, March? you know, each negotiation is different in its own respect. But, you know, Dave Hart and our administration has done a tremendous, tremendous job of really making this a reality and really, you know, the small details that it goes into, the logistics like I spoke about. And they've been outstanding and, and you know, hats off to them for making this a reality. When you came in the spring, what was your first impression when you looked at Bristol Motor Speedway? Impressive, you know, impressed, you know, the magnitude of it, you know, the excitement, uh, the pageantry of it. And this is truly a special place. And uh, we have a great following here. It's part of our great fan base. So now to be a part of it in a few years is exciting. You're going to take a spin in a car so you can equal uh, Coach Beamer before the game? You know what? Uh, I'm looking forward <laughs> to that. I would like that. I'd like to take a spin in the orange car. <laughs> Is this, uh, I know you want to focus on South Carolina. Is there any distraction at all involved in trying to get ready for a game? No, absolutely not. You know, we've had a bye week. You know, we've had a work week. Uh, we practice Sunday. So with NCAA rules and regulations, you have to give them a day off. And, you know, Monday's their day off. And that was this schedule in terms of practicing on Sunday and having Monday off has been in the works since middle of January. So this has absolutely no effect on preparations or anything in terms of getting ready for South Carolina. What are your thoughts on South Carolina? It's going to be a great challenge. You know, we welcome another top 10 opponent. I think their results speak for themselves. I think they're an extremely complete football team when you look at physicality, when you look at size, when you look at speed. They're coming in here with a lot of momentum, you know, a lot of confidence, and it's going to take our best effort to compete on Saturday. And our players realize that, and, uh, you know, it's, it's 
going to be a great opportunity for us, but have a tremendous amount of respect for their football team. And again, everything I believe is in result oriented. You know, and you look at their results again; it speaks for itself. Which were you happy with how these teams kind of guys. approached practice last week? You think they made use of, of the? Extra I did. Time? You know, I thought we had a product, uh, productive uh, work week, but again, it's now what we do with it. You know, I thought we started the week off uh, in the right way uh, with a, with a very good practice on Sunday. But again, at the end of the day, it's it's guys making plays, making plays in critical situations. It's possessing the ball. It's third downs. It's turnover battle. You know, all the things that it takes to play winning football. Coach, what's it mean? I mean, Coach Beamer's got over a quarter century coaching the game. So what does it mean from a personal standpoint to, to be able to coach such a big game here, but to be able to coach against uh, Frank Beamer? Well, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Coach Beamer. And, uh, you know, I had the opportunity last year while we were at Cincinnati uh, to play Virginia Tech in Washington, D.C. So this will be the second time, you know, playing a Virginia Tech football team in an off, uh, a neutral site, so to speak. But, you know, what he's done with building that football program into one of the elite programs in the country. And like I said, what he's done, I know a lot of their coaching staff, and there's a tremendous, a tremendous amount of respect on our part with their football program. Butch, as you watch South Carolina Last question. On, on Saturday, it looked like, you know, that defense has always been pretty solid, but it looked like they really kind of figured out some things offensively in that game. I think putting a 52 on the road in this league is pretty impressive. Well, again, they've been very impressive offensively. Connor Shaw is as good a quarterback as we've seen. You know, he has the ability to extend plays with his legs, but, you know, his accuracy, you know, he's very poised, he's very calm, he's in control of their offense. They have weapons, they have great speed, great running backs, very strong physical offensive line, and they're deserving to be a top 10 opponent, and it's going to be a great chance. Challenge for us. Okay, we got to do Vol Network Radio.